Okay, welcome back. So we ended the last lecture uh, with this promise that today we shall start mobility. Okay, uh, we are we should not forget what we have learned till now about doping and career concentration and how to calculate career distributions and so on. Uh, we'll go ahead and study mobility today. And once the word mobility basically means that we are now in the discussion of low field, you know, transport in a way. So what is this low field transport, high field transport? Okay, those are the two things we have to at least get to be aware of the names you know what is the meaning of the name low field and high field transport what is mobility and why is it important in current flow why is it important in carrier transport you know and uh, is electron mobility a fundamental quality and uh, what about whole mobility and how will mobility affect device performance if i take about uh, led or if i talk about a transistor are actually mobilities of carriers like electrons and holes important uh, those are the things that we have to understand in the light of practical devices also okay as we discuss we only not only discuss the mathematics and physics but we have to also calibrate ourselves as to what we are learning and how are they important for the practical day to day devices okay so let's come to the discussion of mobility today if you talk of an electron for example and you are talking about a sample for example suppose you have a piece of silicon okay so silicon block for example you know there's a silicon block here and uh, there are electrons here. Suppose this is n-type doped silicon. Okay, so there are electrons here. These electrons, if you do not apply a field, suppose there is no field, you are applying no field. No electric field is applied. If there is no electric field applied, and it's uniformly n-type doped, right? Even if you connect a circuit, you take a wire. There is no field applied. No voltage is applied. There is no field. Matlab there is no voltage then there will be no current also because you know it is in equilibrium. So, electron will collide with many other things. What are the things it will collide? Electron will have a random thermal movement at, at any temperature right. Say I am talking about room temperature, there will be a random thermal motion of electrons okay. There will be a random thermal motion of electrons and this is without any application of field. So, electrons will move randomly. Suppose they have an electron here it will try to move that will that will collide with something and then again it will move it will collide with something keep moving then again collide random direction completely random maybe it will move here again it will collide and move here and collide there is a collision here again move here collide okay what will happen there will be no net motion everything is random motion everything is random motion so it will keep moving zigzag 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 zig but it will not eventually move to any other matlab it's there is no net motion of electrons from one place to another it's basically coming back to the same position eventually after lot large number of collision okay it's colliding and then it's coming back to its own position it's randomly colliding so an electron that is at point a will never reach like a point b here it will basically keep colliding 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 there's no random motion this is all random motion because of thermal vibration and because of this random motion there is no net movement of the electron in one direction there is no net movement of electron in one direction okay and because there is no net movement of electron in one direction there is no current current will only come when there is a movement of electron in one direction coherently you know i mean not coherently you know uh, together there should be a total movement of electrons in one direction if it is not moving then there is no no current so this is in a random thermal you know vibration and this is happening without any application of field um, it is just a random sample and what are these collisions taking place from do you know when I say an electron is here it is colliding it is colliding and it is changing the direction again it is colliding here again changing the direction. So, these collisions these are not electron electron collisions for a moderately doped semiconductor electrons electrons do not collide electrons are I mean subatomic particles wave particle right collisions actually happen in two things. One is that electrons will collide with vibrating atoms. In a crystal, in a silicon as a, as a semiconductor for example, the atoms will be vibrating okay. at room and any temperature they will be vibrating except 0 Kelvin, they will always be vibrating. More the temperature, more will they vibrate. So, they are vibrating strongly at room temperature. If you raise the temperature to 50 degree or 100 degree Celsius, they will vibrate even more. So, the atoms keep vibrating because you see you can think of atoms these are atoms okay not electrons you can think of atoms like they are connected by spring okay they are connected by spring and they are actually vibrating they keep vibrating okay 
there are different modes of vibration like they might vibrate you know to they might come close together they might go away from each other out of phase they might one might vibrate this side one might vibrate this side so there are different modes of vibration this vibration of the atoms can you know scatter electron when the electrons collide we call that they are scattering electrons are getting scattered from this collision okay so these are collisions are happening but actually electrons are getting scattered right so this vibrating atoms can scatter electrons okay and secondly ionized impurity also can scatter electron ionized impurity where is ionized impurity coming from are that phosphorus atoms that you have put no the phosphorus atoms that you have put to dope the semiconductor after giving the electrons away what remains is nd plus i have told you what remains is ionized donors or if you are adding boron for p type what will remain will negatively charged ionized acceptors so these ionized donors and ionized acceptors and ionized uh, positively ionized donors and negatively ionized acceptors these ionized donors will also scatter your electrons or holes so these electrons and holes that are scattering here if it is n type it is electron only you know they are scattering then colliding here then going here then going here and going here there's no net movement there's no net motion no current flow these collisions the, each of these collision can happen either because of vibrating atoms or because of ionized impurity either of these two primarily there might be other also but these are the two primary uh, scattering mechanisms you can say scattering mechanisms or they are the collision mechanisms that will you know the reasons why the electrons will collide and basically keep coming back to the same place after a large number of collisions it's all random okay and when i say the vibrating atoms actually are colliding or scattering it's not like the electron directly comes and hits the atom or even you know when i say it's a negatively charged acceptor or positively charged donor it's not like the electron comes and hits it physically there is no physical hitting here what is happening actually is that these vibrating atoms or these ionized impurities they set up a potential they set up a potential energy and that potential energy perturbs the electrons motion okay this actually this vibrating atoms the vibrating atoms or ionized impurity okay or the ionized impurity they basically set up a potential set up a potential energy because of their vibration or their charge and so on and this potential actually perturbs or scatters the electrons and holes whatever is it right so this is actually a uh, for example in ionized impurity scattering when you have nd plus it will have a coulombic you know attraction or repulsion coulombic force it will attract or repel an electron a, an electron that is going will be attracted you know by the coulombic force or if it is na minus it will be repelled by the coulombic force so the electron was going this way okay suppose this this ionized impurity will because of the coulombic force the electrons path will be changed like this and that is scattering okay that is scattering that is scattering and it's a perturbation that has been set up it actually needs com complicated quantum mechanics to try to solve these equations and do which we are not doing in this course but this vibrating atoms and ionized impurities they set up a potential field and uh, you know that potential basically perturbs the electrons motion or holes motion and that's how they scatter by the way these vibrating atoms you know these vibrating atoms have a word we call them phonons a phonon is a unit of vibrating atom we call them phonon when i say phonon it means the atoms that are vibrating we call them collectively phonon it has many uh, types but primarily there is one acoustic phonon you know uh, acoustic phonon and then there is one optical phonon and each of these acoustic and optical type of phonon actually why, why are we calling the acoustic and optical they depend on the way they are vibrating they might vibrate out of phase they might vibrate in phase and so on so there are ways to discern that so there is acoustic and optical mode they both have one transverse uh, mode and one longitudinal mode of vibration transverse and longitudinal so there is a transverse mode there is a longitudinal mode for each of acoustic and each of optical phonon that there is this ways they are vibrating actually is what defines them anyways we will not have to go to acoustic and optical in this course we can just collectively call them phonon or vibrating atoms they scatter the electrons and coulombic force of the impurities also scatter the electrons and that's why electrons uh, you know do not 
eventually move from one place to another collectively they are just randomly moving around scattering you know they are not actually not carrying any current right. So, I can say tau is the mean time between two successive scattering. So, between two successive scattering so I have an electron that is here it scatters somehow it gets a collision moves here then again it scatters moves here again it scatters moves here. So, the mean time the mean time between two collision the mean time between one collision and another I can call it tau you know there will be many taus here tau 1 tau 2 tau 3 the mean will be tau ok the average time that is taking between collision will be called tau ok that is all good. Now, suppose you look at this uh, you know the semiconductor uh, I had given you know this example that there is a semiconductor like a silicon semiconductor for example, this is a silicon piece of silicon. Now, what if I apply a field there? What if I apply a field there? Suppose I have a piece of silicon, I will just draw just a block maybe like this right. So, I have a piece of silicon here ok. Suppose I apply a voltage now which means I am applying a field applying a field what will happen then? Then there will be current if I apply a field then there will be current what is happening then? It means this is a thermal the initially this is random thermal you know the random thermal vibrations or random thermal motion that was happening that was not carrying any current, but now there will be current what is happening is that the moment you apply a, a field what will happen is that there will still be collisions. So, electron is here suppose it scatters suppose it scatters again scatters 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 keep scattering it keeps scattering but over a finite period of time the electron has moved this distance the electron the electron actually has moved this distance over time has moved this distance right electron had started at point B A it has reached a finite point B in some time t it actually has gone from here to here it has gone of course, it is not gone in a straight line it has gotten many collisions maybe hundreds of collisions, but there is a collective motion of electron now. Although there is this random you know there is a random thermal collision keeps happening random thermal collisions are keeping happening, but electrons are actually moving now in one direction. So, we can get current electrons are moving what is happening here is that although there are random thermal collisions that are happening, but because there is a field the field is in this direction the field is in this direction that is why the electrons are moving in the opposite direction the field is in this direction that field will accelerate the electron from this point to this point ok the field will accelerate the field will accelerate, but it will collide with a phonon or it will ionized impurity it will collide the electrons will collide here right. So, electron has collided the moment it has collided with a phonon of vibrating atom or an impure ionized impurity the electron has lost its energy lost its energy that it gained from the field. See the moment electron accelerates it basically is gaining energy right force and the moment it is you know accelerating is gaining energy the moment it is colliding with something else it is losing its energy that it has gained through its uh, acceleration from the field remember this all happens because of there is a field you know it loses and it comes back to its random thermal energy the thermal energy it again it has, but again the field is accelerating. So, it again it will go right it will again go again it will lose the energy at collision here again it will come back to thermal state again the field will accelerate right it will gain energy, but again it will collide it will lose again it will accelerate. So, it will keep going on. So, this acceleration losing energy in collision acceleration losing energy in collision this process will keep going on electron collectively keeps moving forward and forward and forward. So, there is a net motion of electrons in this direction there is current flow this is your electron transport that is happening you know and as long as you are increasing the field your electrons will keep moving faster that is called your low field transport beyond a certain point you cannot keep increasing the field indefinitely because after some time the, the electron speed will get saturated and that we call 
a high field transport okay we'll come to that quickly right so here we have to define the concept of mobility so what's happening here is that uh, if i again come back to this slide what's happening here is uh, you know what is the green color is the, yeah what is happening is that the average distance it is traveling i can call it some you know some l l is the average distance that the electrons are covering before they are getting collided and tau is the average time it takes for collision to happen right and as i told you at each collision basically the electron loses the energy it has gained from the field it comes back again to the thermal energy kind of a state it has the thermal motion again it gets accelerated and keeps going forward right that's happening what's happening so uh, if i look carefully the current uh, we'll come to the current little later i'll come about uh, you know the, the 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 velocity if i start from zero the velocity is given by acceleration times the time so you know electron is here okay it's getting scattered up to here and it's accelerated here again it loses the energy and comes back here so if i take this for example if i take this segment it will start from zero the velocity will be zero because <coughs> there will be a thermal velocity but thermal velocity is random what is moving the electron from one point to another point here is the field electric field the thermal velocity will be random the field will give a definitive directed velocity okay the field will allow the electrons to will have a direction a directional a definitive velocity because the thermal velocity is random it can be in any arbitrary direction but here the electrons will move in one direction right so the velocity of electron has two component one arises because of thermal which is random and this thermal random motion will not contribute to current because it will be in all kinds of direction it's it's not contributing to current then there's another component of velocity in the presence of an electric field only and we called it the drift velocity the the word drift the word drift means that current is flowing or electrons are moving or whatever happening in the presence of field if there is no electric field drift will not take place this remember this electric field need not be externally applied sometimes the electric field may exist inside a semiconductor even without the application of field i told you if there is a slope in the conduction or valence band it means there is a field instead of the conduction band being like that and valence band being like that if the conduction band is like that and valence band is like that there is a slope here it means there is a field that field need not be applied externally so that whenever there is a field whether external or internal <coughs> there will be drift whether the drift is eventually leading to current is different because it may be op opposed by diffusion there is another thing but drift component will exist when there is a field so velocity has a thermal velocity that always exists you know because of the thermal motion and then there is a drift velocity which arises because of the field that you are applying so i'm talking about the drift velocity here the acceleration that is you know the the, the field is giving an acceleration times the time it takes from this point to this point this is the distance you know this is the velocity the acceleration times the time it has taken you know that's what is happening what is acceleration acceleration is nothing but force times force divided by mass force is nothing but charge times the field you are applying this is your force okay the charge times the field okay is actually your force divided by mass and here you have to use the effective mass i told you effective mass basically takes into account all the quantum mechanics in the material right into tau this f is the field you are applying so i can write velocity is equal to q times the field which is the force divided by the mass times the average time so i can write it as q tau by m star same thing into field this quantity i use the mu and i call it mobility this time this so i can write v as mobility times field where mobility is equal to q tau by m star okay let me see velocity equal to mu times the field and your uh, mu mobility is actually q tau by m star the units of mobility is centimeter second per volt 
per centimeter square per volt per second okay that is the unit so you see velocity and field they are linearly proportional and the slope is called mobility so if i plot velocity of a particle centimeter per second on the y axis on the x axis i'm plotting electric field so this is volt per centimeter electric field then the velocity will give increasing linear lead field the velocity will give increasing increasing linear lead field what does it mean physically it means that <coughs> as i am increasing the field more and more suppose this is 10 20 30 40 50 you know i am increasing the field and if i am increasing the applied electric field then the electron is moving with higher and higher velocity the electron is becoming faster and faster which makes perfect sense the more force you apply the faster a particle will go so the more electric field i am applying more will the elect you know the faster the electrons will flow and which means a, a higher field actually means higher voltage i am applying across the same distance right so if i am applying a voltage v if this distance is l then field is given by v by l right so if i keep increasing the voltage i actually keep increasing the field so if i keep increasing the voltage the electrons will move faster and faster and because the electrons move faster the current also will increase and that's why if i plot i versus v it will keep increasing because electrons are actually increasing their speed that's why current is increasing with voltage which is actually a way of saying that electron speed is increasing with respect to field and as you might now realize the slope of this velocity and field is called mobility so the mobility of electrons actually is a uh, indication of the is the slope between velocity and field it indicates how rapidly you can change the velocity by applying a field if you have this is one for example this is one material this is one semiconductor say x another semiconductor y has a velocity field like this suppose this is the curve now this slope is higher no this slope is higher than this slope what, which means that this particular material which has a characteristic like that has a higher slope which means it has a higher mobility it has a higher mobility what it means is that for the same field for the same field i can get a higher velocity in one material than the other material for the same field i can get a higher velocity in one material than the other material that's what it means okay the slope so mobility is very essential and it is the slope that will come up, up here and remember this velocity is drift velocity it comes here it comes into picture when you apply a field okay so the moment you apply a field this will come into picture so this is all about this is at the starting point of mobility actually okay uh, and different materials will have different mobility electrons will have their own mobility and holes will have also their own mobility right holes also will have their own mobility now if you look mobility is actually charge which is the say constant times mean scattering time by m if the effective mass is large then your mobility is low holes typically have larger effective mass than electron which means hole mobility is actually lower than electron mobility okay your hole mobility is always lower typically almost always lower than electron mobility that's why holes are slower if you make a device based on holes it will not be a fast device so much okay so now i told you that uh, electrons scatter and collide right they will scatter and collide sorry they will keep scattering and colliding like that right there right they will keep colliding and scattering and this is because of either phonons or ionized impurity i told you that right so phonons and ionized impurity will have an effect on electron or in a hole I talk about electron only mobility the more they scatter the more they scatter the lower will be the mobility which means the more frequently the electrons will scatter if you which means if you scatter more frequently your tau will come down the mean free time that you are spending between collision will come down 
if it comes down in q tau by m this also comes down so your mobility also decreases so more frequent collision leads to lower mobility and phonons and ionized impurities will scatter electron they scatter electron little differently they have a different temperature dependence with respect to mobility and also uh, they also have dependence uh, or maybe no dependence on the carrier concentration that you have so there are quite a few things that you have to talk about and also if you rem remember uh, you know velocity and this is field i told you the slope is the mobility but this cannot keep increasing indefinitely otherwise it will exceed the speed of light one time you know that is not possible also after some time actually it will saturate this velocity will saturate once the velocity saturates then mobility no longer plays a role this is called high field transport in a high field transport your velocity which was linearly increasing at the field will now saturate which means even if you increase the field the velocity will not increase it will saturate so now the slope has become zero you can say the mobility does not play a role now this is actually called the high field regime when the velocity has saturated right and this is called the low field regime when your velocity and field are linearly proportional this is the low field and it will enter the high field there are many devices transistors that will operate in the low field regime sorry and then many transistors that will operate in the high field regime so those are the things that we have to keep in mind as we go ahead right so uh, uh, this uh, how el how electrons are scattered by phonons and how electrons or holes are scattered by ionized impurity is very important because that will tell you how mobility will change and this is a very important concept that we have to understand so uh, in the next class we'll take this up so we'll wrap up the class here so phonons and ionized impurities how are these two things affecting the mobility of carriers okay and how are their dependence on temperature for example if i heat a substrate or sample if i increase the temperature from say room temperature to 100 degrees celsius or if i cool it down to say minus 100 degrees celsius how will phonon scattering or vibrations atomic vibration scattering and ionized impurity scattering how will they affect the electron mobility this is extremely important because mobility is very sensitive to all these things okay and electron mobility will define how much current will eventually flow and how much current will flow will actually determine how the device is performing so that's why if you can you cannot take a cell phone to very high or very low temperature even before you know intrinsic condition sets in your mobility will go crazy your mobility will increase or decrease a lot when you take your cell phone to a higher or lower temperature because there are transistors in your processors and memory you know all these chips that are there and once your mobility of the fundamental material silicon for example it changes with temperature then the current that will flow in the chips will also change and if that changes then all your logic cmos everything that is there will go for a toss that's why it is very important that we understand how mobility changes as a design engineer you have to take into account how mobility changes with temperature okay or with impurity background concentration so that your device design is realistic you can say that okay this iphone will operate only between 10 degrees celsius to say 50 degrees celsius there's always a range there right so there are many things that come into that so from the next class we'll take into understanding how temperature dependence you know what kind of temperature dependence phonon and ionized impurity scattering has okay so we'll end up the class here thank you for your time